Greetings or things, I'm Claire and in this video we are going to walk through and edit for how to create a stop motion. We're going to start in Lightroom Classic and move over to Photoshop to put together the finished product. So I actually previously recorded this uh, screen capture video of the edits. Um, I did all of my editing on this lovely Wacom tablet. I love this guy. I've had him for like a year and a half now. I'll leave the link down below to another video where I talk all about the Wacom tablet, but that is my editing tool. I highly recommend getting one if you haven't already tried editing on one. It will change your life if you're still using a mouse or a touchpad, believe me. <laughs> okay, we're starting this now. So this is the stop motion we are creating together. Um, this was a yummy chocolate hazelnut drizzle stop motion over a bed of oatmeal and banana and strawberries. So to start off, I have already edited um, all of my images previously, batch editing specifically, so that every single frame captured for this stop motion receives the same edits, so everything is consistent. Now I am going to highlight all of them or select all of them and right click and go to edit in and click open as layers in Photoshop. Alrighty, so here is the scoop. When I was shooting this actual stop motion animation, I had the focus on the bowl of oatmeal because that's where the action is happening. I wanted that to be as in focus as possible. But since the focus was on the bowl of oatmeal, that meant the other surrounding items like my uh, product jar wasn't going to be in as focus as I wanted it to be. But a quick solution is to composite a slate together. Uh, so all I needed to do was take a separate photo uh, just simply shifting the focus from the oatmeal to the Nutiva jar and snapping a photo of the Nutiva jar to get that same or very similar shot, but that um, jar being in focus. We're going to open up the separate file where the Nutiva jar is in focus. So we're going to use the quick selection tool to select the jar of Nutiva, then select mask, make sure everything looks good. And so we're going to hit OK. Then we're going to hit the layer mask button that kind of looks like a camera on the bottom. And you'll see a mask pop up on that frame. And um, then I will create a new layer and merge the layer mask with the new empty layer to just have the new Tiva jar um, just against like a clear, the clear background. So literally there's just the new Tiva jar left. Uh, next, I am going to clean this guy up by using the patch tool first. I'm gonna get the date off of the jar for sure, uh, the jar lid, I mean. And we're going to uh, just keep using that patch tool to clean up any impurities. So I usually like to use just simply the patch tool and the spot healing brush. And between those two tools, um, I can usually get all of my cleaning done. Um, it's quite easy to do. The Wacom tablet really helps with this kind of stuff. So now this lovely new Tiva jar is in focus and he's all clean. So what I'm going to do now is click select all and then copy and then just go over and paste that guy right in. And it's so easy to do. Um, so now he's just kind of layer one hovering and I like to take them all the way down to the bottom. And now in this single Photoshop tab with all of the, all of the frames, we're going to actually start editing the stop motion file itself. Let's see. So I think you can just do Command T to move this guy around. And I am just pasting him right on top of the other jar. Now, because of um, just the way focus works in the camera and science and physics. Um, the jar is a different size than the other jar that wasn't in focus, but honestly, if you just simply increase its size just a little bit, um, you can't tell. And honestly, the product looks a million times better just because it's in focus and clean. 
Okay, so that's that. So now that this specific frame has the clean jar in it, I am going to go in just on the same layer and clean up any other impurities that I see in the rest of the image. Like that little speck on the fruit and reflections in the spoon. That's my ceiling fan. Yeah, I always have to cut out my ceiling fan. Um, again, I am just doing all of this cleaning ultimately with the goal of creating a clean slate. So this will be the ultimate like foundational base layer of the stop motion animation. Now that the clean slate, the final frame, aka the final frame is ready to go. Um, we made a copy of that. We're going to move on to the masking part of this editing process. So I'm going to go up to my next frame or my next like image right now. Anyways, so to start this masking process, I am simply going to take the quick selection tool and just highlight that bowl of yumminess and then just go into the um, select and mask <laughs> and we are ready to go. Um, then simply hit the layer mask button again and boop, that mask pops off to the side um, on your frame layer. You can see it. Okay, so right now all I'm doing in this very sped up process is giving every single file a layer mask and a clean slate and we're merging them together. It's pretty simple, honestly. You just need to copy the layer mask by hitting the option button and dragging it onto every single file and then just um, uh, repeating or adding the same clean slate to every single file as well. Uh, the mask should be on the different file that's, you know, every unique file and then the clean slate file or layer should be right underneath the file layer and then highlighting both of them, you can hit right click and merge and the file with the layer mask of the oatmeal bowl will compress down onto the slate and will create one whole clean layer with the clean action in the oatmeal bowl and the clean slate, including the jar that's in focus now. Okay, so now that we have merged all of our files, masks and final frames, clean slates together, um, we are ready to actually throw these layers um, into a timeline and turn them into frames basically. So to do that, you will simply go up to window, scroll all the way down and hit timeline. And then this new bar um, underneath your image or images should pop up and you're going to simply click create frame animation. And then you're going to hit the tiny box on the right and hit the box thing that says make frames from layers. Yep. Okay, so as soon as you click make frames from layers, every single layer that we've just edited on the right will file into the timeline. And just, I mean, they should all be there, but obviously it's a good thing to double check. Um, so now I'm simply going to highlight all of these frames Click the little down arrow and change the frame rate to 0.2 seconds. And I'm actually going to go into the final frame and change that frame to be two seconds, just so the final frame lasts a little bit longer. You can see it before the stop motion repeats itself. Yeah, next you can just simply hit play Okay, awesome. That's ready to go. So final step to export this stop motion animation, I am going to go to file and click export. And then you can either uh, click save as web and turn it into a GIF file, or you can simply render as video and turn it into an MP4 file. And um, then it's, it's ready to go. It'll be shared on all different kinds of social media platforms. Look at those nanners. Mm. I love 
bananas and strawberries and chocolate. It's like a heavenly combo, you know? That's that. Thank you so much for watching. And I hope this was helpful. I'd love to hear your feedback. If this video of me talking through the, the edit was easier or if my voice, just simply hearing my voice is enough, let me know. <laughs> and I will see you next time. Thanks again. Bye. <laughs>